Today on Handy Dad TV, I'm going to give you the pros and cons of several home EV charging solutions ranging from $300 to $700. You'll find time codes in the video description below so you can skip ahead to a specific brand that you're interested in, or if you want, you can just skip all the analysis and go right to my recommendation. I'm going to focus on 240 volt level two home chargers that all come with the J1772 connector because these are compatible with every EV sold in North America. But don't tune away if you own a Tesla like I do. I'll specifically cover that situation towards the end of this video. I'm sure someone's gonna correct me in the comments that this is not really a charger because the charger's in your car. Technically, these go by the acronym EVSE, which stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. Now, every EVSE is effectively an intelligent extension cord. It simply delivers power from your panel through this cord to your car. But it also includes some electronics that communicate with the car to tell it how much power it can pull. Now, I'll be going through these really pretty quickly because I've assembled all this data into a spreadsheet that you can download. You'll find a link to that down in the video description. By the way, if you happen to see on Amazon a price higher than what I'm showing here, be sure to look under the other sellers for the best price available. I'm taking them in price order, starting with the most expensive, and the first up is the ChargePoint HomeFlex, which sells for $6.99. The charge point can be plugged in with a NEMA 1450 or 650 plug, in which case it can charge up to 40 amps. Or it can be hardwired for a maximum of 48 amps. It's Wi-Fi connected, UL certified, comes with a 3-year warranty, and it's made in Mexico. The juice box charger goes for $649 and it has a maximum charge rate of 40 amps whether you hardwire it or plug it in. It comes with a 1450 plug, or you can get a hardwired version for $10 more. It's Wi-Fi connected, UL certified, comes with a three-year warranty, and is made in the USA. The Wallbox Pulsar Plus comes in two price points, $599 for a NEMA 1450 plug delivering 40 amps, or $100 more to hardwire it for 48 amps. Both versions are Wi-Fi connected, UL certified, come with a three-year warranty, and are made in China. The Evo Charge costs $599 for a non-Wi-Fi version that has a max charge rate of 32 amps. It comes with a NEMA 650 plug, or it can be hardwired. It's UL certified, comes with a three-year warranty, and is made in the USA. A Wi-Fi enabled version will cost you more, but you can save a little if you go with a shorter 18-foot cord instead of 25. The Grizzly GR1 sells for $459 and has a max charge rate of 40 amps with either a NEMA 1450 or 650 plug. No Wi-Fi on this one but it's UL certified, comes with a three-year warranty, and it's made in Canada. The Amazon Basics EVSE looks like a generic version of the Evo Charge. It costs around $425 as of this recording, but I didn't see a Wi-Fi option. It plugs into a NEMA 650 outlet and delivers 32 amps. Looks like this unit is made in Taiwan, but the warranty and UL status were not mentioned in the listing. If you happen to have that information, please leave a comment below. The Emporia EVSE goes for $399 and can deliver 40 amps with a NEMA 1450 plug or 48 amps if you choose to hardwire it. It is Wi-Fi connected, UL certified, comes with a 3-year warranty, and it's made in India. The value brand, Lectron, has two chargers on my list, both around $330. They are both portable units with NEMA 1450 plugs no Wi-Fi, and only a one-year warranty. The only difference is one model delivers 32 amps with a 21-foot cord, and the other has a max charge rate of 40 amps, but with a shorter 18-foot cord. Both models are made in China, and neither are UL certified. EVSEs are largely a commodity, just like extension cords. They all work the same way and will take the same amount of time to charge your car at the same rate. In other words, all 40 amp chargers are gonna take the same amount of time to charge your car, regardless of brand. So don't fall for any of the marketing hype that says one brand is faster or better than another. Just like extension cords, EVSE costs vary based on the length of the cord and the amp rating. Now this cord is much thicker because it's rated for 48 amps. This one is much thinner, it's only rated for 32 amps. To help you compare, my spreadsheet calculates two important metrics for you, price per foot, and price per amp. When I sort the list by price per foot of cord, 
The best values are the Electron 32 amp model with a 21 foot cord and the Emporia with a 24 foot cord. When I sort the list by price per amp, the best values are the Electron 40 amp model and the Emporia which can deliver up to 48 amps. Now don't put too much weight on the amp rating though. In my spreadsheet I included a tab that shows the theoretical recharge times for various power configurations. You just enter your battery size and the car's maximum range and it calculates the approximate charge times for you. Odds are you'll be fine charging overnight at 32 amps and don't really need to deal with the extra weight of a heavy duty cord. Now I personally wouldn't recommend anything that isn't UL listed, so that would cause me to exclude the two Lectron models. They also have the shortest warranties. So bottom line, in my opinion, the best pick on this list is the Emporia EVSE, which can charge at 48 amps and comes with a 24 foot cord for $399. Now some may give me a hard time because I didn't personally test every one of these models. But I did test the Emporia EVSE for the last three months and I can say emphatically that it works perfectly and charges my Tesla Model Y consistently at 40 amps without any issues. I also have it powered by a 50 amp GFCI breaker, which is now required by code. And that breaker has never tripped because of this charger, not once. Now why would a Tesla owner install a charger with a J1772 connector? Well, consider this. If you install a Tesla wall connector in your garage, you can charge your Tesla fine, but you can't charge any other EV. This EVSE works with my Tesla and any other EV I may get down the road. It'll also work for guests who bring their non-Teslas to my house and might need a quick charge before they leave. And it lets me keep the stock UMC in the car for travel. I'm sure you'll find plenty of other choices of EVSEs on the market, both now and even more in the future. It is kind of heavy. That's the only downside to it. All right, at this point, it is charging with 41 amps and 39 miles per hour. So it is going to charge in three hours and 25 minutes. Not bad. If you find one that's a better deal than the Emporia, please let me know and I'll add it to the list. Please leave a comment and let me know what car you have and how you charge at home. Folks, step right up to be the first to own a Handy Dad 1000, the fastest EV charger known to man. Hang on there, are you trying to tell me that yours is faster than this one that charges at 40 amps? No, 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 no. Your EV charger is 40 amps. This one charges at 9,600 watts. But 40 amps is 9.6 kilowatts. Do you hear what I'm telling you, boy? Well, because you take amps times volts. 9,600 watts! Yeah, but 240 volts times 40 amps is 9.6 kilowatts. Boy, if you're not understanding me, you're just stupid. But it's the same thing. This one is way better than yours. And it comes with a three million year warranty. And I'll throw in a free set of Ginsu knives. No? Nobody? Huh. <sighs>